There is close to how many books that you receive from the Abbott family? Sometimes a book is more than just a book. I think it's interesting to try and imagine how that book uh, crossed the distance. It could also be the guide for a pioneer Nebraska family that was well ahead of its time. It's made it this far. Let's go back to 1870 in Grand Island, Nebraska, where lawyer and Civil War veteran Othman Abbott was courting Elizabeth Griffin, a high school principal in Iowa. An important piece of their long distance love story was a book he gave her, The Subjection of Women by John Stuart Mill. So it was a very controversial book. It was published in 1870 in New York, and that was around the time of people like Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Carrie Chapman Catt, you know, these people who work, you know, in the United States were working towards uh, advancing legal rights for women. Othman and Elizabeth passed the book back and forth, using its margins to write notes to each other. It became a unique part of their courtship, a place to exchange important ideas. They eventually got married and had four children, including Edith and Grace Abbott, who later became leaders in social work and education. Othman was Nebraska's first lieutenant governor. The whole family supported equal rights for all. They were very much uh, in favor of equity and justice for black people. And when they came to Nebraska, the new territory in Nebraska, they were equally committed to um, working towards voting rights and, and justice for women and children. The decades passed and the old book faded into Abbott family history. It wasn't until Kathy began researching the Abbott sisters that she noticed repeated mentions of the book and the important role it played in the family and the fight for equal rights in Nebraska. I thought to myself, you know, of all of the books that they own, why is it that they kept talking about this one book? And I thought to myself, it, it must have had special significance and importance to the whole family. But where was it? Kathy had no idea if it even still existed after all those years. She contacted Carrie Stouffer, a curator at the Stir Museum in Grand Island, where the Abbots were from. She had already searched the shelves of the research library there, but thought she'd give it one more try. We made an appointment, she came down, and uh, the first place we started was at the beginning with the card catalog. There it was. It was right here between these two books. A 150-year-old book hiding in plain sight all these years in the Stir Museum's archives. John Stuart Mills, The Subjugation of Women. Still full of marginal notes back and forth between Othman and Elizabeth Abbott. Right away we started finding, you know, some very interesting remarks, although very faint. The pencil marks were very faint. Mm -hmm. but, but it was obviously a discussion between O.A. and Elizabeth, just like all of the articles that Kathy had found mentioned. It quickly became clear where daughters Grace and Edith got their passion for equal rights. It was all right there in the book, written into the margins and passed on to them from their parents. He says, I will grant all equal pay, equal education, equal franchise, and equal duties. The book isn't in great shape, but is still a treasure that will be studied by others interested in the Abbots and their work for equal rights in Nebraska. But he knew that it was going to be so controversial. Students at the University of Nebraska Kearney have digitized the book's pages. It's really a, a wonderful experience. I teach about the Abbott sisters. In my own research, I work with the Abbott sisters. Um, and so to kind of see something that is important to their early development, that's important to uh, uh, their later careers and also their parents specifically and kind of the role of women's rights in the state. Um, it, it is very much an honor to work with this. It's a book with marginal notes from a bygone romance that lives on. 
decades after it served as a guide for a Nebraska family that led the way decades before women had the right to vote in Nebraska. To know that this book was so important in establishing the foundation of the marriage between Lizzie and Othman, and that they made a concerted effort to raise all of their children, their sons and their daughters, uh, to have equal opportunities uh, for education uh, and experiences in life. The Abbots are buried in a family plot in Grand Island, a final resting place for a father, mother, daughters, and sons who used a book to build the foundation of their marriage and teach their children the importance of equal rights for everyone. I think Nebraskans can be proud that the influence of the Abbott family is still felt today.